going on out there. I thought I'd take the time today to uh, show you a little bit of uh, construction, like not even apprentice level, just just completely, pretty much for kids, for somebody that is completely out of the light, and show you what I have as a tool belt. These are the type of things that you're going to get if you want to get into construction. Now, a lot of you may not be interested in construction. And my family tried to get me into construction. I never wanted to do it. I did construction work for a short period of time, and I hated it. I was out of work for a while, and I got back into it. I liked it. But here's the problem. I wound up getting fired. And, uh... I think as you'll find if you go out there in life, one of the mentors said, never cast out the trades, because you never know when you'll need them. And by trades, I'm talking about electrician, I'm talking about plumber, I'm talking about HVAC, I'm talking about carpentry, I'm talking about tile. This right here, 16 ounce est wing here. This is a drywall hammer. And uh, this is used for, for using, uh, for nailing like drywall, putting those, those boards on. You'll notice that the head here, it has this wop, waffle shaped head and these, it's kind of got that bell shape. It grips the hammer, it grips the hammer. Uh, but this hammer is only 16 ounces. I had to figure this out the hard way. If you're running these, these are three and a half inch nails. Uh, these aren't, you're going to have a real hard time driving nails. And if you're one of my younger users, uh, I highly suggest you practice driving nails. Everybody thinks they can drive nails until they get on a construction site. Uh, you'll feel real embarrassed. I promise. Then, we have the box blade in here. Now, it's been said by great leaders, always keep a knife. I don't always keep a knife because, uh, you know, you might get in trouble or you might use it in a bad way if somebody hurts you but this can be used for you know cutting rope cutting twine or in the case of the the sheetrock the wallboard you can cut lines and you snap your wallboards you measure your boards and when you go to measure things you can get you one of these a tape measure You've got to have your tape measure now. Uh, that's how you measure. Do you know how to measure? If you don't know how to measure, I suggest you take off the video now and go look on how to read a tape measure. You can do your ASVAB too. I'll teach you a few nifty tricks. But you've got your quarter inches, your, your eighths of inches, uh, your half inches, and if you'll notice it goes to foot, so you see that's 16, that one with red, and if you go up here, that's 32, that's where you put your studs traditionally, studs behind a wall, if you look at a house, you never really, you take it for granted until you really see them being built, they put the studs generally 16, 32, 48, etc., Well, we're on the topic of measure, get you a level. Um, this is a, a, a speed level. Uh, if you're going to be doing big rafters and big boards, you're probably going to get a big level. Uh, I'm not quite to that level yet. So, um, I also am a bit of an unorthodox builder. I don't always like but always keep one. I'm 
got your keyhole saw here. Now, the keyhole saw is good for a number of things, uh, particularly in drywall. You know, the keyhole saw is not really good on woods, and it's not as useless on metals, pretty much. But if you, are for example, have to cut off a rough edge of sheetrock or cut around a, a light socket or a uh, you know, light switch uh, or shave off the end of a wall, you know, that's on a stud, it's good to shave that off and you want to have your keyhole saw. We have here the fish knife, fillet knife, that's for uh, uh, just general purpose use, if you need to, you know, cut on something. Then I got my channel locks here. Always got to have your channel locks. Uh, these can be used for grabbing things, opening things, twisting things, pulling nails, pulling screws. Um, they got a nifty feature. You can twist them right here on this end. And you see it has these tool things right here. And it's got a spring. where it actually locks into place, and I'll show you. Let me find something here. Toothbrush here. Now, that's hard to squeeze, but if you squeeze real hard, you'll see right there the, the piece is locked. The jaws lock on like that. So... These are just some basic tools you're probably going to want to have. Then we got the speed square. This is one of these things that, uh, I don't know. I never really had one, never really wanted to use one. This is a Swanson speed square. I recommend this. Um, if you look here, it says hip val it comes the one that I saw comes with a blue book and uh, I recommend it for kids I mean I can't stress it enough they don't like me around them but I promise you I really wish I had one when I was younger I probably wouldn't have embraced it but uh, it teaches you there are these things called hips these things called valleys these things called common rafters, these things called studs, these things called gables, uh, ridge poles, um, studs, there's decking, you've got OSB oriented strand board, you've got, uh, you know, all different types of, of woods. Which I've got some pretty neat woods around here right now that I'm just trying to learn how to do it because you know, and you can't get a job and nobody's hiring you. If you read, buy my book, Facing the Storm, Unlimited Motivation, is where I said uh, if you can't find work, you got to create your own work. You got to do something. Always be growing. A B G. Always be growing. And down here, this is a matter of personal preference. Down in these ones, uh, I keep my screws. Now, it depends on what kind of job you're doing. If you're using doing the drywall job, you're going to use a different type of screw. Now, if you're working on an example, what I'm working on, these bigger woods, these are three and a half inch decking screws. And they have this six-sided star on them. A lot of you may look at these and say, wow, look at that star. Three and a half inch. And that's just what these nails are because it's got to go through that much wood. And it, it, it has to be secure. So when you go to secure an item to another item, you'll have these. But you always want to make sure that it's square and it's level. Unless you just want to go crazy and experiment.
but when you start talking about big jobs, it could be a hazard if things are not there because it goes into the center of gravity. Always have your workplace pencil. This is a pencil. Uh, these pencils, uh, you'll take your thing, you know, your little measurement here, and you just mark. And you'll see there's a diamond here. A lot of people don't use the diamond, but that's for you to read. All this is for you. I can't do it all, so I give this gift to you. Figure out how to use this, because each one of these has a function. It's not just measuring. These are your degrees. This is your pivot point. This is the pitch of your roof. What kind of roof do you want? Do you want one like this? Do you want one kind of like that? It's up to you. See, in my left hand, I've got my, uh, this is an 18 ounce, this is a framing hammer. It's got the claws here for ripping out nails. This is an 18 ounce. When I talked to you earlier about driving nails, this one has a little more power behind it. Now, you're going to have to have power in your string, I mean, in your swing. But some recommend even a larger hammer. You may need a 24 ounce or a 28 ounce. They've, I give you this gift because when you go to the hardware store, you'll never look at it the same way. And I think everyone ought to feel that way at some point in their life. If they want to. Then we've got our chisels. You see, this one hasn't even been used yet. Yet. There's a guy on there. You will need to check him out. Uh, he does all type of stone work. His name is Mike Haddock. Which it might not be a good idea to mention your sensei's name. But uh, Haddock teaches you how to do stone work. And uh, what you'll do is rock facing. You know, you take a piece of granite or a piece of limestone or just a piece of brick got right here. And uh, you, if you really want to get artistic, you know, you just kind of take your chisel and you chisel on it and you can make different shapes and do different things if that's your uh, your cup of tea. And But always remember your safety glasses. Safety glasses and sometimes your mask. Uh, if you don't, you're going to have these. These are concrete burns. Mixing concrete. Uh, concrete's very abrasive, and it's harder on the lungs. It's even harder on the eyes. So, uh, Also, your tool belt. The tool belt here. Uh, this is a CLC. They're going to run you about $80. If you know a good boss man, they'll uh, they'll buy you the tool belt, they'll buy you the tools, and they'll put you to work that day. And they'll take it out of the check at the end of the week. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that it was of service to you. I am very sorry for some of the things that I've taught you.